Hello dear pupils, welcome to the house of knowledge. My name is Katika Businjan Mijidovic. Today's webinar will include answers to your questions on the topic of Gulliver's Travel by Jonathan Swift. So in the video lesson you learned some biographical facts about Swift's life. So, and why was Jonathan Swift inspired to write the Gulliver's Travel? Well, because it was all based on a dream he had the night before and he wrote it down that morning and turned it into a book. What is uh, the interesting fact about Gulliver's Travel? Uh, Gulliver's Travel original title travels into several remote nations of the world, four-part satirical work by Anglo-Irish author Jonathan Swift, published anonymously in 1726 as Travels into Several Remote Nations of the World, a keystone of English literature. It was one of the books that gave birth to the novel form. Though it, didn't, uh, though it didn't yet have the rules of the genre as an organizing tool, a parody of the then popular travel narrative, Gulliver's Travel combines adventure with savage, savage satire, mocking English customs and the politics of the day. What example of satire and allegory in Gulliver's Travel? Mm, well, in Brob uh, Gang, the status of laws is targeted by Swift. Instead of the overly complex and difficult to understand language too often used in the laws of his own land, Brobdigian's laws are limited and plainly written, with only one possible interpretation, since no law in the country can exceed uh, in words the number of letters of the alphabet. The laws are plain and simple and easy to understand. English and American courts are well known for being tied up in legal, legal wrangling that cost time and money, in part due to the, to the legalist. Without the possibility of misinterpretation or interpretation of the law, no one will be able to corrupt the system through bribery or threats, since uh, there is only one meaning. Anyone can apply the laws in Brob uh, Gang without fear of being wrong unlike in the US and England. Gulliver's introduction of gunpowder to the king is also satirizing European savagery. The king is morally just and human and is surprised that European leaders would use such a weapon against enemies and their own people without a shred of remorse. Certainly we might see the king as somewhat of a fool for failing to grasp the power behind such weapons, because that is Gulliver's reaction to him, but is he? Swift is purposely contrasting the king of an exotic land with the current king of England, who would use cannons and other weapons in his own bid for more power. If we look at the meaning of allegory, a story, poem or picture that can be uh, interpreted to reveal a hidden meaning, typically a moral or political one, we can get a better grasp on what Swift is trying to reveal. He is telling us that the legal system in England is unwieldy in its language that gives power over to a segment of the population to write, enforce and interpret the laws in ways that make it possible to corrupt the true purpose behind the laws. In the same way, Swift is pointing out the warmongering worm among European leaders is not something that a man of principles and morals would engage in at the expense of his people. And how did Gulliver reach in Brobdigang? When Gulliver was in his, on a ship, uh, at that time they had to face a fierce storm for, for, the, for days. When the storm uh, abated, another problem hit them. There was no drinking water available on the uh, ship. When they were searching for water, at that time a boy saw an unknown land from the top most of the ship and thought to search water there, and he reached to rob the gang. Why does Gulliver keep traveling? Well, mm, because he is a seaman by trade and an explorer by fictive necessity. If he doesn't travel, Swift can satirize the different aspects of human nature, thought, politics, and social arrangements he wishes to, he to satirize, or at least not in the genre in which he wants to do so. 
When Gulliver's travels are complete, he can no longer endure his wife's company and chooses to spend his time with his horse instead. His uh, ultimate destination is misanthropy, that is what enabled Traveller's broad experience of humankind in Kulkalites. The fiction of Lemuel Gulliver permits Swift to cast his satire in the form of a travelogue, a popular, a very popular genre as it had been when more, more wrote Utopia as a travel narrative. It's a neat conceit, really. Uh, sell someone something they expect to yield thrilling experiences of the foreign and exotic in distant lands only to reveal that those distant lands are versions of home and that we are each of uh, an instant of the exo exotic horrors we saw. The bizarre entrapping of Lilliput Brobdy Gang Acceptor defamiliarizes our reality long enough to make us feel a measure of shock when we realize that we are Lilliputians, Broadbeganians, and etc. These techniques are essential to satire. Horak codified the basic idea when he wrote in, he, uh, in his very first satire, Quid writes, Mutata nomine dete, fabula narrator. Why are you laughing? Change a name and the story is about you. What is the best movie or uh, version of Glover's Travel? Well, Wikipedia lists more than a dozen versions film, television, uh, one offs, and series, starting with George Mellis in 1903. I still like the one with Curran Matthews made with stop action animation Master Ray Harryhausen from 1960, called Three Worlds of Gulliver, because the original work by Swift is. A, sophist a sophisticated satire of government, a parody of the travel books of its day. It is extremely difficult to translate to film. Still, Harryhausen and uh, the screenwriters had fun with it. And here's uh, the short glossary of Glorious Travel. Uh, let me read you some of these words. Uh, for example, ague, a fever, us uh, usually. Malarial marked by regularly recurring chill, ancient and insign of plague, ugh boy, a clever, crafty boy, and bay of Campish, an arm of the Gulf of Mexico west of Yucatan Peninsula, uh, Bristol barrel, a barrel made mm, in Bristol of England, uh, calcine ice to burn ice into powder. Caprices, sudden impulsive changes in the way one thinks or acts, um, debuched, less led astray, morally corrupt, depraved, uh, the downs, the local of Gulliver's home in England, equipage, furnishings, accessories, express, a special messenger, courier, fortnight, a period of two weeks, the frog of the food, uh, of the food, a tri triangular. Horny pad in the posterior half of the sole of a horse's ho hoof. Gaming, the act or practicing of gambling. Uh, gangs, a river in northern I India flowing from the Himalayas into the Bay of Bengal. Hems, mm, the hogs of or hind legs of a four legged animal. Helot, a member of the lowest class of serfs in ancient Sparta. Uh, his white staff, domestic staff, housekeepers, in a closed chair, uh, in an enclosed one-person chair with glass window, carried uh, on poles by two men, mm, a sedan chair, intermission, insertion, lapid, a loose flap or fold of a garment. Uh, my friends, I, I advise you to read this book in English and you'll find out that Noel is very interesting and the, there is always a huge difference between translation uh, into your native language and the original text. So, uh, find some time to read this book. And our webinar is over for now. Thank you very much for your attention. Goodbye.